Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going through some multi-choice questions of movement in and out of cells, which is the third topic of the IGCSE Biology Syllabus. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm going to be going through six multi-choice questions with you guys today. If you want access to the full lot, I have at least 20 per chapter of the syllabus, so at least 500 in total. Uh, just join me on Patreon and you will get access to that instantly. But without further ado, let's uh, have a look at these questions. So the first question, what would lead to a decrease in diffusion rate into a cell? So all of these different options will certainly affect diffusion rate, but you do need to know how they do so. Uh, a higher concentration gradient uh, will increase the diffusion rate um, simply just because there's a more higher disparity between uh, the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration and so the higher the concentration gradient the faster the rate of diffusion. Uh, temperature the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of diffusion, simply because molecules just tend to move faster and have more energies when the temperature is higher. And C, the larger the surface area of the cell, generally the faster the rate of diffusion, simply because there's more area at any given point for the diffusion to occur. So the first three options have actually theoretically should increase the diffusion rate, not decrease it. So we're left with option D, which is the thicker cell wall, which will indeed decrease the fusion rate because that means that there is a larger distance that the molecules have to travel. And the larger the distance, the slower the rate of diffusion simply because there's more coverage or more distance that uh, the molecules need to cover as they move down the concentration gradient. So the answer here is D. So what describes active transport? Uh, active transport is of course defined as a energy requiring or energy driven process by which particles are moved against the concentration gradient. So uh, if you think about diffusion as a natural process by which particles move from a higher to lower concentration gradient, active transport reverses that process and moves the particles forcefully from a lower to higher concentration and to oppose that natural sort of uh, tendency uh, you, energy is required for this process so the answer is A energy is required and particles move against the concentration gradient. So which characteristics are correct for both osmosis and diffusion? Okay so uh, well, you know, osmosis is by definition the net movement of water particles from a higher water potential to a lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane. And uh, diffusion is the process by which particles move from a higher concentration region to a lower concentration region down a concentration gradient. And so for both processes, you do need a concentration gradient, whether it's a water potential gradient or just a, you know what we typically call a concentration gradient. Um, and they are both a passive process by which energy isn't you know required uh, to to move the particles. It's a it's a completely natural process, unlike unlike active transport. Only osmosis requires a partially permeable membrane, and diffusion does not. So the answer in this question would be C. So which is an Example of active transport A movement of sucrose in the phloem, B iron uptake by root hair cells, C oxygen moving from the alveoli into the blood, and D water uptake by root hair cells. Uh, so uh, the if you take just take a look at these options, you need to be aware of a couple of things. The oxygen moving from alveoli into the blood is purely by diffusion, and you should be fully aware of that. Water uptake by root hair cells is through the process of osmosis and uh, the answer is B which is iron uptake by root hair cells so let me just explain that a little bit further in the soil uh, not always will there be more nutrients in the soil compared to within the roots of the plants, right? At some point, the plant cells or the root cells themselves may have a higher level of nutrients. Now, if you were to rely on diffusion, again, which is the natural process by which molecules move, then you'd expect the nutrients to move out of the uh, root cells simply because there's a higher concentration in the root cells compared to the soil and obviously that isn't good for the plant. Uh, so in such cases where the soil may lack or be in lower concentration of nutrients then active transport can happen to allow the ions within the soil and the nutrients to enter the root hair cells despite going against the 
concentration gradient uh, and obviously this is an active process by which energy is required we will look into that in the next topic but uh, regardless, uh, this is an important process by which uh, plants can sort of maximize the absorption of ions and nutrients in the soil. So the answer is B. So the diagram shows two cells, the net movement of water is from cell X to cell Y. What causes water to pass from cell X to cell Y? Well, if water is passing from the left-hand side to the right-hand side here, from X to Y, it suggests that uh, osmosis is occurring. Um, and remember, the direction of water molecules in osmosis through the partially permeable membrane, which is, of course, uh, this segment here where you've got the cell membranes of the two cells, uh, it needs to go from higher to lower water potential. And so it suggests that cell X has a higher water potential, and that cell Y has a lower water potential, therefore the gradient is going uh, from left to right and therefore water is moving in that particular direction. And so this is certainly not an active process, it's not active transport, uh, this is the movement of water that we're talking about, so therefore it has to be about osmosis. And so therefore the answer should be B, where water potential is higher in cell X.